Well, we've long wondered if there was life on Mars. Now, the James Webb Telescope has scientists asking if there is life on a planet named K218b. Now, for more on this, we're joined by astrophysicist Crystal DiNapoli. Crystal, welcome to the program. Now, uh, can you first tell us about this giant planet, K218b? What is it about this planet that is yielding evidence of possible extraterrestrial life? So this has been a pretty interesting planet for us for about a year now. So James, um, the James Webb Space Telescope essentially had some pretty interesting data over a year ago, finding some signatures essentially of um, methane carbon dioxide, which indicated to us that this might be an interesting planet to look at for that quest for life, because I find it still just an amazing mystery that we are still in this moment in humanity where we have not confirmed life beyond our solar system, let alone our planet, right? Um, and so we needed, essentially, some people were getting a bit excited a year ago, but we needed more data um, to be able to sort of confirm whether this is a planet of interest. And that's where we are right now with these detections of dimethyl sulfide and dimethyl disulfide. Um, these are essentially compounds that we only uh, have experienced essentially being produced by biotic, essentially living organisms on Earth. So it's not to say that that's the rule, but from our perspective, this is certainly the strongest indicator we've had of life outside our solar system. But is it possible that the existence of these two chemicals mean that there is uh, no life in uh, that planet? See, it's you've got to consider, I guess, like the combination of factors with this because it certainly isn't a confirmation. And I mean, even I think just within the last year, we have detected... For example, a certainly a very hostile comet where we have had similar signatures on it. So it certainly can't be a celebration that this is a guarantee, but it certainly is warranting um, further investigation. And I know that's on the cards, but I totally understand why so many astronomers like myself are just a little bit guarded and sort of not jumping the gun about this being, you know, aliens. <laughs> Of course not, yes. Uh, but the one thing I really wondered about this discovery, I mean, with the, uh, how does you know, a, a telescope like the James Webb uh, detect chemicals? How does that work? So it's pretty interesting. Essentially, we use light in all, in all aspects, a wide spectrum of light. And something really cool happens when essentially a planet can pass in front of its star, its star that it's orbiting around, that light that comes through. We essentially get different spectra that can give us indicators of absorption and things like this that would indicate to us what type of... Um, you know, elements or compounds are present in the atmosphere. So it's really genius. It's essentially just dealing with light in really creative ways. Um, but we do have to rely on essentially um, these really removed ways of trying to detect elements. Yeah. Yeah, it's amazing, amazing technology. Uh, but how uh, significant, Crystal, is this discovery, particularly for scientists who have spent years researching about science of uh, biological activity outside of Earth? Look, I, it's, 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 it's on two sides, right? It's, it's incredibly significant. It shouldn't be dismissed, right? Because any new discovery we have that will lead to life is going to begin like this. So there's always going to be that sort of hesitancy and also that sort of uncertainty. But it, it, it could be, sincerely, um, this, the first step between um, finally that confirmation. Because to me, this is one of the most outstanding things, that we are somehow here with the technology that we've developed, the things we've been able to see in the universe, and yet still we are the only confirmed life we've ever seen. It's just bizarre. Yes, and, and, and suppose beyond uh, this uh, major planet that seems to be, uh, you know, the most habitable, are there others out there uh, from previous discoveries that could support life as well? So, I mean, there are constantly candidates that we're investigating. Um, it's fantastic having JWST being able to give a more thorough look as well at these candidates, but also getting access to such an incredible telescope is a slow process. And so I know that even the follow-up for um, K218b that we're, we're considering at the moment um, is going to need so many hours, it's still going to require essentially years of investigation. Um, so we have, we have heaps of candidates to look at. And I mean, this sort of reminds me of the excitement we had in recent years when we had detection of phosphine on Venus and that was massive because that's another bioindicator. But once again, it sort of started to fall flat. So uh, there are candidates. This is a quest that's going to keep on going. I know at some point I'm confident we're going to have a positive an answer. Just don't know if it's this case. Yes. And just wanted to get your thoughts finally you know, on that all-female uh, Blue Origin crew's brief uh, trip to space. As an astrophysicist, what is your take on, you know, this, this commercialization of space tourism? Because opinion has been divided on this particular mission. 
it's incredibly divided and I'm certain it's going to come down to the individual, right? Look, I, I think you can probably understand more than most people. I would, uh, I, I understand the appeal to space. I get the desire to go there. I understand why space um, tourism is an industry that is certainly starting to take off, at least with a certain, um, you know, cohort of people who can participate. I do, though, I do agree, though, that the climate crisis, I think, is the most pressing issue at the moment. And it just doesn't feel right, I think, for for non-scientific purposes, sending people up to space, the harm that it's doing, you know, that sort of pulls me in away from the fantasy of, you know, I would love to go. So I'm also someone who's struggling to fully celebrate it. I know there were some sort of significant milestones on board as well, but at the same time, um, I don't know if it's certainly justifiable. Well, yes, we all have to look after planet Earth. Uh, Crystal DiNapoli, thank you so much for your time today. Thanks, Garish.